Sarah Abadwe here from Horse Racing Nation, pleased to be joined by a Canterbury expert and Angela Herman to discuss some big stakes action and all turf stakes pick five that's coming up this Wednesday evening. Angela, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you. I'm trying to stay cool. Uh, I'm sure you saw us yesterday. It's uh, over 100 degrees up in Minnesota. So keep that in mind when handicapping for Wednesday. It's going to cool down a little bit, but as of right now, that's the only objective for my Monday. <laughs> well, I'm sure it helps having some of these races go off a little bit later in the evening, gives everybody a chance to beat the heat just a little bit. Yes, yes. And there's no rain in sight or anything like that. So make sure that you eject all the main track onlys and uh, horses who like a little bit of cut in the ground because neither one is going to be in play on Wednesday. We haven't had a substantial rain in a long time. So our turf course is very firm. I walked it the other day. It's in great shape. I mean, it's still very lush and um, it doesn't have a whole bunch of dead spots or anything to it. And we're going to have a lot of fresh ground on the inside. But it is still very firm because we've had sunny, windy, hot weather lately. So in other words, it does not look like the Churchill Downs turf course that looks like a patch of land from somebody's abandoned building. <laughs> well, you have a closer vantage point to that. So yes. <laughs> I didn't want to come right out and say that, but there's a couple of turf courses in big trouble across the country. Ours is not in with that. It's in great shape and it's perfect timing for Wednesday. Which is wonderful to hear. A couple of big scratches on this card. Some horses pointing to some other stakes races. I think the biggest one that we were both kind of disappointed about is that two Emmys will be going elsewhere because we we're going to both try to beat him and he would have been a very short price. Yes. I mean, just by virtue of the man saddling him, he would have taken some local money and national attention because of what he's done. I thought the pace lined up against him. I still feel it would have, and maybe that's why they're not coming. But uh, he... I think would have had a challenge in trying to get clear and get the trip that he would want out of that race. I agree completely. But to kick us off, we are starting with some three-year-old fillies that are going a mile in race number three. You have the Curtis Sampson Oaks. And this was a race where we did agree on uh, the top choices that I have for myself, but I'm actually spreading a little bit beyond those two. This is the wide open spread race for me of the sequence. I'm going one, five, nine, 10, 12, and 13, just because mainly the top horse that I like in here, Schlafmitz, the number five horse, there's a lot of horses that are leaving the Churchill Downs turf course and going to this turf course. And we've seen a lot of horses make that move, whether they ran really well at Churchill or whether they kind of flopped and did, were no shows there. Whoever it is coming out of that turf course with so many course issues, I don't really know how to properly assess those performances. And we've seen horses that did really well there come back and do really poorly. We've seen horses that did no running there come back and run really well. So I just didn't want to completely trust this one when she was making her turf debut last time. And she is going to be the lukewarm favorite three to one on the morning line in here. But a horse I was really excited about originally getting onto the turf there when she was going out for Mike Maker. She was a price in there. She did finish third. And then I know we both have some interest in Blissful coming in off the layoff. Broke her maiden at Saratoga as a two-year-old routing. Missed the break. Closed into a slow pace. Things you really love to see. And Sharita Vo is isn't too bad off the layoff either. Right. And especially with graded or non-graded stakes, I should say, she doesn't take that many shots with horses off that kind of layoff, but obviously Blissful has been showing her something in the morning that makes her think she's ready for this spot. I, I hate the 13 hole. I, I know that that's going to be on actually one of the more chewed up parts of our turf course, even though it's not really just because of the rails being down. But I think that Blissful in what she showed in her first race, I thought she'd get a similar trip today. And I did see it, a little bit of speed on the inside, not an overwhelming pace, but blissful. And I mean, yes, the maker filly that you mentioned are the only two that I'm going to use in my pick five. Maker picks his spots very well with fillies coming up here in particular. I was looking because he does get bet so often at the difference between the males that he sends up and the females that he sends up. And the fillies have gone seven, three, and two. I mean, they're really really good when they come up to when they just fit in well and typically he sends horses with some speed and she has a bit more speed i thought than blissful so i took one in the other and moved along in the sequence um, i will say morgue's world if you were planning on incorporating her ran on sunday so she's not going to run in this spot she will be a scratch so i guess we get the 12 hole instead of the 13 hole but i still thought that blissful would be able to tuck in get at least into like the three or four path and have clear sailing. And if she has that same kick that she did last year, she's going to be tough to hold off. 
I just always upgrade any horse that can close into those slow New York paces. I don't know how much New York racing you watch, but it's painful. So to <laughs> see any horse overcome uh, 25 and 50, yes. you got to give them some credit. So we'll see what she does coming up on Wednesday. But then we are turf sprinting in the next race, race number four. Those are for three-year-olds and up, going five furlongs on the turf course. And... I like seven cents in here, as I know you do as well. So I'll let you start off with what you like about that one coming in for Brad Cox. Well, I think Karatari would be about one to nine in this field. And seven cents made a good run at him. I mean, that was an interesting trip. And I wonder what they're going to try to do with him because there is so much one dimensional need the lead sorts in here. I don't think seven cents fits that bill, but he won't be too far off it. But I mean, at least Juan Giroux knows him very well, can hopefully just stay a length or two off. I don't think he has a giant kick, so I'm hoping that he doesn't get left at the break or anything. But I tried to get around him as best I could. I'm kind of interested in Huey attack because of the likely sizzling splits that everybody's going to set from the outside. It's just the fact that Plain Talk, Chess Master, and uh, Joe Sharp's horse in here, Spycraft, all drew to the outside. They're going to put some of the horses to their inside in a very tough spot. I'm hoping that Seven Cents can extricate himself from that. But did you think that any of those three could get clear from each other? Because I didn't think that they could. So I kind of pushed all of them out of the picture. Yeah, I mean, I I want to include Spycraft as well, just because I've seen enough from him before that last out start that maybe he does kind of fit with a class group like this, whereas others I think are kind of, you know, they're, they're the more local horses or they're kind of like, oh, well, this is our shot to run here in a turf sprint. So let's take it in a stakes race. And if we suck up for third, great. Uh, with Spycraft, I think that he might fit with this group. This is the time to show up and prove it, and the 13 hole certainly does him no favors. But I do like that he at least had to duel and take some pace pressure last time to show that he can do it because he's going to have to do it again, likely, in this spot. And then, of course, Seven Cents is hopefully sitting that trip to just kind of pounce on those horses that are scrambling for the lead early. But I've seen so many races in New York that I get used to the idea that if somebody goes, nobody else goes. And I don't know with some of those jockeys coming in to run in these races, if they'll bring that mentality with them or if they'll leave it at home. And I'm hoping that maybe with Spycraft, he gets to be kind of one that goes and everybody else plays the snatch and grab game behind. But of course, you're not going to see as much of that in the turf sprint. No. And I, I think <laughs> at least, well, at least come the locals, I think, are... I think that's really their only shot. So they're going to go, go, go. And I think he, if nothing else, even if he gets a just off the pace trip and he doesn't get into the teeth of a duel, he's still going to get a very wide trip. And I just, I can't see him overcoming that post. That was the main drawback for me against him. But he was so impressive at Indiana last time. It was very hard to toss him out. But I just saw too many strikes against him. And uh, I cut it down in this leg of that pick five. I noticed that you included On Your Mark as well. What were you interested in about with him? Well, On Your Mark just seems to have improved on the turf. Should be, I thought, in a good spot. I like the middle posts in our gate in the five furlong turf sprints. And I, On Your Mark has at least been racing recently and doesn't need any certain sort of trip, I didn't think. But he's another one that could be victim of traffic because he is going to be so close to that speed duel. I just thought that his versatility was more useful than some of the other styles that are in here, kind of like Seven Cents. I didn't think that he needs any one sort of scenario. So I did take him second. He gets a lot more pieces than he gets wins. But as far as who's going to have the most advantageous setup in here, I think a horse that can be placed anywhere and can go in a heartbeat because we do have a different configuration than a lot of these horses have been racing on at the fairgrounds and some of the bigger tracks. I think it'll play well into his hands and, and the price will be right. I just tried to find something spicy along with seven cents rather than chalk 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 because I'm also going to single the chalk in the next leg right and this is a horse speaking of that next leg in race number six the lady Canterbury stakes now we're going a mile I've tried to beat her so many times and she just keeps <laughs> proving me wrong and showing up um, and at big prices as well she's been decent prices at the fairgrounds winning two times going the route distance there at a mile and a 16th and then this is another one that comes out of a race over the Churchill Downs turf course which you can draw a line through and even if it wasn't because of the weird course configuration you could argue maybe she doesn't want a mile and an eighth and she was facing Bleecker Street in there, who's undefeated for Chad Brown, along with several other top kind of echelon turf horses. 
and I'm just not going to let her beat me again. But the one shot that I kind of did want to include was the number eight right to her outside and Saranya, just because I can kind of give her an excuse first off the layoff last time out. And that was a salty allowance group that she was facing. You know, some of those horses, the top three in there all came back to face each other again in the modesty at Churchill Downs after that or sorry, the mint julep that stakes was, um, where Gam's Mission did win that race over Delica. Again, I don't really know how to judge those races over the Churchill Downs of course, but even a horse that she finished ahead of, Whimsical Muse, came back and won a stakes at Monmouth. So to me, that seems like a key group. And if she's ready to fire second off the bench, then maybe she could be a little bit dangerous. But I agree that the seven seems like the most likely winner in here. And I respect uh, Saranya's chances. She's just, I don't think, coming into this quite the same way that she was last year when she won the Curtis Sampson Oaks. At least you know that she likes the track and she should get an outside stocking trip like she did last year. They didn't come home very fast in the, Sam in the Curtis Sampson Oaks last year. And I think that kind of made Amalfi Princess's trouble and her clothes look better than it was. I, I didn't really care for either one of them enough to where I think that they could beat She Can't Sing. But... If you, if you don't like She Can't Sing's closing style, if you don't think she gets the pace or anything like that, I could see how you try to beat her. Jareth Loveberry is very familiar with our turf course, too. He rode up here very well on it for a number of years. He's departed recently. I mean, if you're going to go ride first call for Larry Valley, I guess I would, too. But <laughs> he comes back. He's going to ride her. And Team Block has sent up very limited runners, but very live runners when they run up here. Um, they were second in the Lady Canterbury a couple of years ago. And if they had... I think run in Arlington, I don't know if she'd be up here, but this is about as good a fit as you can have for her in the steps towards summer races that I think they're aiming at too. Yeah, clearly the horse to be in this spot. And it's the first time that she's been favored in quite some time as well. So <laughs> she makes a ton of sense. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, in the Mystic Lake Mile Stakes, now these are for the males. We're going a mile, three-year-olds and up in race number seven. Two Emmys coming out opens the race up to others we were both very against like we talked about earlier I really like Tut's Revenge and then I also was interested in Drama Chorus as the horse that finished second to him last time just on what he had done before that on the turf which was clearly his preferred surface they both ran one two in the off the turf race and the familiarity with the track as well as Tut's Revenge having beaten Popular Kid two back. Popular Kid is a horse that has like a very special place in my heart as one of those older veterans that just seems to keep kicking around. Um, and then he came back to run in the stakes race at Oaklawn. And it seems like whether he's sprinting, routing, dirt, turf, he just shows up. He's very consistent. He's hit the board in his last six starts. And the pace edge that he seems to have in here, which I know is why we were both kind of against two Emmys, I'm really interested in his chances. Oh, this is kind of the race that I had the least strong opinion in. Um, I, I was against two Emmys, so I was going to take a lot of shots anyway. But I find it interesting that you bring up Drama Chorus. Uh, because Pete Madsen has a couple of very live turf chances, and he's one of them in these last two legs of this pick five. I just, I couldn't picture anybody getting away and getting comfortable on the front end. Uh, watching Spanish King and Kingdom and Mr. Dumas together last time gave me no inspiration that either one of these two was going to win. I thought it was a pretty ideal setup, but I did try to take a, a horse coming from Churchill, so I ended up with the rail horse and street ready, and I'm hoping that he can find a little bit more kick than he has in the past. I think that he and Luis Fuentes, who's been riding our course very well lately, can stay relatively close but still be able to let let things get hot up front because I think that it will be that way. And that was kind of my argument with Tut's Revenge. He's not an easy horse to restrain. He likes to be in the thick of things. He likes to beat you. He's very game. But that said, I think that he'll be in a line of at least three other horses that are not going to make life easy for him. I don't think that Street Ready is a slam dunk. I don't think he's a single. And I think that the edge naturally goes to the horses coming from Churchill Downs. But if you single any one of them, you're a lot braver than I am because I just didn't see anything in their recent races that would make me go, oh, unlike She Can't Sing, where, you know, she's been consistent enough lately and good enough, I think, to beat all of those. I don't think that all three of these are going to fill out the trifecta, but I think at least one or two of them will be in it. I like it. And I mean, if the opinion is that you were against Mr. Duma and two Emmys and then two Emmys comes out, it's it's certainly an opportunity to find another price alternative, even though he's not going to be in this race. And 
I did, unfortunately I couldn't really find much of a price in the last race that we're going to be talking about the Mystic Lake oh. Derby. The <laughs> Come um, on. you you have though. Um, I <laughs> I really liked Wajik Chief for Tom Amos. Uh, this is once again another horse coming from the Churchill Downs Turf Course, and before that. He was in the Jeff Ruby stakes on the synthetic. And then if you go three back, that was actually a win at fairgrounds going the mile on the 16th. He has some early speed. I think he's been facing tougher horses, horses that were, you know, going to the Kentucky Derby, even though Tis the Bomb didn't show up in there, even though that was Ed's uh, main choice in the Kentucky Derby, which is... Say nothing bad about Tis the Bomb. Don't you dare. A wonderful horse that was running on the wrong surface in that race. Um... And then I also wanted to use Stitched as well. This is a horse that actually won on the Churchill Downs Turf course and then won the Caesar Stakes at Horseshoe Indy last time in his stakes debut. And then the 10 Heaven Street is another one I wanted to use because Brendan Walsh has just been firing like crazy with his turf horses. And he did get them to run really well over the Churchill Downs course, such as New Year's Eve, Temple City Terror, Santine. And so he's familiar with getting these turf horses to improve when they have arrived in his barn. This is a horse that used to be with Christophe Clement and Steve Asmussen, so has been with top trainers, but he's just been doing so well with his turf runners lately that I was interested in him as well. Yeah, you have to use him. Uh, Heaven Street's best shot might be a little bit better than Ben's Malice, as you saw when they ran against each other down at Tampa, but I had to take Ben's Malice. I, he's one of the better Minnesota breads, especially on turf that we've seen in a long time. He held his own in that race too. I mean, I don't think he was beating Heaven Street, but he's a giant animal. I mean, this he's still got a lot of frame to fill out. He's a big dude, so I don't mind him getting the outside post. I think that will help. Last time he was three or four wide the entire way. I mean, he did just get up, but they've been aiming for this race for quite a long time. So the fact that Ben's Malice drew the outside doesn't bother me as much as it would if he drew the rail. It, you know, and try to get a semi going as opposed to a Vespa. You're just going to need a little more room and a little more time. So that should suit him very well. I thought there was enough pace in here with some of the sprinters, with Magoo, with Tonka Warrior. I don't think that Mac Robertson intends on letting either Stitched or Dwajic Chief go crawl along at 51 for a half mile. And either time that these guys have to face some sort of legit pace, they just don't run as well. I mean, I know that Stitch came home very, very quick in the Caesars, but he should have. I mean, he crawled early. And as as good of a ride as that was, I just can't see that happening with with Tonka Warrior, with Magoo in this spot, probably with intent on letting Xavier Dave relax a little bit off the pace. All three of them come from the same barn. I couldn't picture either one of them getting very comfortable and getting loose on the front end. Now, I was interested in the horse right between them, Switzer, as this one... I'm surprised he didn't make it to the turf before that very last start at Keeneland. Now, I know that he had been at Oakland Park, so no opportunity there. But he ran very well, and he didn't seem to like kick like a sprinter to me. He looked like a horse that would be looking for this sort of trip. So if him, Ben's Malice, and Heaven Street kind of sit in the same spot early, that's what I saw happening. It, it may not pan out that way, but just given the way that all of them ran recently, even though they were at different spots, I thought that one of those three would be able to take advantage of a solid pace up front. I'm hoping it's Ben's mouse though. Pete Madsen has invested a lot in his Minnesota breads over the last few years. And it would be so cool to see that big giraffe of an animal come back and win the Mystic Lake Derby. It would just be so, so cool. And if you want to see a happy man, it'll be Pete Madsen if he wins this race. Well, I think it's so important when you know that connections are pointing for a specific race versus just kind of running at whatever shows up. If they have a plan in mind, they work backwards from that plan to get their horses ready. And so often we see horses succeed that are following along to plan A with no interruptions, kind of like early boating in the Preakness. That was always the plan. And that right. he does so well in there because they have executed that plan so well. So that might be one that I might have to consider putting on my ticket, knowing that this is the race that they have been aiming for. And I also think it's just so important when you have someone that is so local and familiar with the track like you are, because I'm used to watching all of these crawling, no-paced races all the time. So I'm like, who's the speed? Who's going to be in front? That's a horse that I definitely want to include. And then I don't put as much stock in there being some actual pace on early because it just never happens, no matter what it's going to look like on paper. Yeah. So the fact that these are different riders, this is a different course, this is a whole new game plan, 
things will actually plan out a little bit more kind of like they're supposed to, and they might go, you know, a quarter faster than 24 in any <laughs> sort of race is like, yeah. finally, um, <laughs> it's, it's a great refreshing break from what I've been watching lately. So yeah, I mean, you bring up a great point that these horses aren't going to get the easy time of it that they might elsewhere. Yeah, I think that just in general, if you're playing our races anytime going forward in the summer, typically, I think people bring horses or claim horses that have some semblance for early speed. If they want to run them on either surface up here, typically our turf course and our, especially our dirt are very kind to of speed horses. So you just naturally see those horses get brought up here and they do end up going very quick. I mean, we had an almost track record the other day and horses will keep going. So it does play a lot different, I think, than the coasts, and, and that's a fun challenge, though. And to see these horses come in from the outside to see how they'll handle it, sometimes they do rise to the challenge. I mean, maybe Stitch will go 45 and keep going, but at least on paper, that doesn't look like his favorite thing to do, so I'm shooting against him. Well, I like it, and hopefully one of us, or maybe both of us, will get lucky in hitting this pick five, but I think no matter which way you slice it, you're looking at some potential prices, as well as a horse like She Can't Sing, you can kind of key off of when making your tickets. Yeah, that was as close as I could get to a key in this sequence, but other than that, all of us look at it a different way, and because of these full fields that, I mean, are really bigger than any day that I can picture in a long time, not since like our, our claiming crown races, have we seen such contentious fields like this especially wind up for stakes racing on the turf. It's so much fun. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm glad I got to talk to you about it too. It's nice to get another opinion on the matter because all of us have a different approach to it and you're very sharp. So I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Oh, well, thank you so much. And to you as well. So great to have somebody that is so in tune with the specific surface and really just a great card overall. Like you mentioned, the full fields, the fact that this is a Wednesday night, you can get people excited and interested in the races during a weekday, something to do during the week to, you know, spice things up a little bit. Uh, it's great for all of us to generate gamblers like myself out there. So really great job that they did with the card and getting these horses to come show up for it. And Thank you so much for taking the time to chat about it. Oh, you're very welcome. And I hope that everybody makes a lot of money, hopefully with a little advice from us. And I'm really looking forward to a fun night. So good luck to everybody and hope you jump in. Good luck, everyone. Thank you for tuning in.